Thank you so much. Thank you to the University of Houston and Victoria, um, the American Book Review. Thank you for, uh, to Dean DeLeo and to Professor Nihon. I'm and to all of you who are here and all of uh, those institutions and uh, individuals that uh, contributed to my being able to visit all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, today I'm going to pre present uh, a preview of a new novel, and that novel is I Hotel. It was published, I guess, last year, the year before, in May, by Coffee House Press. And the book is set in San Francisco in the East Bay Area. How many people know California or San Francisco? Um, and it, it's set in the 1960s and 70s. Most people in this room were in newborn. <laughs> Some of us were here. Um, and the 60s and 70s were a special period of time in this country. This is a work of fiction, and it's based on the history of the Asian American movement. Asian American studies is now an established studies with a 40 and more year history. And ethnic studies is a part of our academic landscape with Asian American, Chicano and Latin American, Native American, and African American studies. And it's taught across the nation and also the world. A lot of folks have passed this way and by now have even retired or died in this effort. And these are some of the Asian Americans uh, who were uh, instrumental in uh, beginning Asian American studies uh, in the United States. And I hope that my work honors their work. But before 1968 in the United States, there was really no such thing, or really minimally such a thing, as courses of study of ethnic immigrants uh, or indigenous communities or the consequences and history of slavery and civil rights and race in the United States. And the reason why any of this exists today is because back then, students and faculty organized and protested, held meetings, boycotts, and strikes, enacted direct nonviolent action protests with police and authorities, and many went to jail. In 1968 and 1969, two San Francisco Bay Area universities, San Francisco State College, at the time it was a college, and University of California at Berkeley, were the sites of protest of students for a third world college for ethnic studies. To hire faculty of color, to eliminate the barriers of class and race, and to give access to higher education to African American, Chicano, Native American, and Asian American students. <laughs> students and faculty went on strike. And they were not just students of color, but all students, because our populations in universities and colleges in those years were really minimal. <coughs> and for a period of time, uh, the students literally <coughs> shut these institutions down. <coughs> now these were the years of the Vietnam War, civil rights movements for black power, feminism, and gay rights. And it was indeed a period of great deal of turmoil and revolt. But there was also, I think, a sense of exuberance about change and revolution. And I think maybe it could be compared perhaps to the events in Cairo and Egypt, um, or even some of the events uh, that have been happening across the United States uh, in the form of Occupy Wall Street. Students who were radicalized by their participation and education took not only to the streets, they went back to the streets of their neighborhoods and their home communities to serve the people. And they found in many of the institutions that we may now take for granted. This is, these are some of the institutions within the Asian American community, but I think in your communities, I think you are aware of other kinds of, um, of uh, cooperatives and uh, legal uh, institutions that were created out of this period. I'd like to say something in particular about ethnic studies. And uh, we saw recent legal rulings in Arizona regarding immigrant profiling and the abolishment of ethnic studies. 
Ethnic studies is under attack all over the country because of our economic crisis and the loss of funding to public education. But I think it might be one of the most important pieces of our public education to keep and to support. Because it empowers students to an intellectual vision of their histories, it gives students positive role models and directs us to the necessary work of our communities. And it gives us the structures of thinking that are necessary to succeed in making social change. And I think the alternatives are bleak, and those of us who come from uh, these centers know what they are. It's gang violence, drug addiction, incarceration, um, and illiteracy. So I implore you, as these initiatives come by to your state and institutions, to think about how far we've come and uh, the sacrifices that have been made but also to think how much has not changed for impoverished communities of color. Ethnic studies is not a static study of a race of people. It's a continuing study under many names, and it can be American studies, community studies, critical race theory, and social justice. And it always refers back to the civil rights movement with its eyes on the prize. And that prize has always been tolerance, social justice, care, service, and community. So 40 years ago, Asian American students, and in particular uh, for this <coughs> story, Filipino American students uh, came to the I Hotel in Manila Town, San Francisco. Now this is a picture of the original uh, old hotel in San Francisco. It was called the I Hotel for short, but it was an international hotel in San Francisco, and it was on a street called Kearney, uh, the corner of Kearney and Jackson Street, uh, between Chinatown and North Beach. And, and previously, Kearney Street was known as Manila Town uh, to the, uh, the people of the city, and it was home to an old Filipino-American community. In the 1960s, the tenants of the I Hotel were mostly old men. Can you see um, they were Filipino and Chinese retired bachelors, and they come to the United States in the 1920s and 30s. They worked as migrant workers up and down the West Coast. Uh, they harvested fruits and vegetables. They worked on the docks and canneries. Some were merchant mariners, veterans of war. They were cooks and also laundrymen. But laws of restrictive immigration and miscegenation and wars had prevented these men from having married lives and families. And the I Hotel was where they came to live out their old lives. For 10 years, from 1968 to 1977, the tenants of the I Hotel, community members and student activists, all struggled to prevent the eviction of the hotel tenants. And the idea in the day was to raise the hotel building to build a parking lot. And this was part of a mastered redevelopment plan to turn this area into a kind of West Coast Wall Street. In 10 years, there were hashed a series of schemes and plans to save the hotel. And the idea among them was this idea that the city of San Francisco could claim eminent domain. In other words, the city would buy the hotel as public property and then sell it back to the tenants to operate themselves as a kind of co-op. And in the day, this was called the buyback plan. But finally, on the night of August 3rd, 1977, that struggle came to an end. Uh, now, I'm going to pause to say something uh, on, uh, about the structure of this book. It's written as a novel in, in 10 novellas. And each of the novellas I'm calling a hotel. So each of the section, 10 sections of the book is a hotel. It's, this big book, which is really um, 10 books. Uh, and I don't, you know, my friends have called this a doorstop. <laughs> uh, and I was really, and I have to carry around this. I'm sorry if you have to, the rest of the as well. Um, the narrator of this particular hotel uh, is the, which is called the Immigrant or the I-Migrant Hotel, is Felix Alos. 
and he's a bachelor, Manong, living in the hotel. And in his lifetime, he's taken on many roles as a laborer and a union activist. And he, but he's been principally a cook and a chef. And so he likes to talk a lot about food. And as a cook, it's also Felix's idea that cooking helps you to work out your problems. So I'm going to read from a section here. I am reading the book, America is in the Heart, by Carlos Polosan. My friend Wen gives it to me to read. You haven't read this book? He can't believe it. If anybody knows books, got to be Wen, the whole poet type teaching at SF State. Says Polosan double features with grapes of wrath. For triple feature, try native sign. Well, I say, Carlos is my friend, but maybe you never get around to reading your friend's book. What are friends for? Give you the digested version to make life easy. But you read Carlos's life and you think your life is bad. Comes nothing close. Every page, Carlos is suffering, starving, broken by work, beat up, founded, stabbed, near dying. KP, getting KB, TB, cheated, losing his country, his friends, his family, his innocence, nearly naked, losing his dream. Okay, nothing we be noise, don't know, but maybe our hell all rolled into one heart. Macario and Abra in the kitchen got the pot of steam rice on the on low, then chopping the onions, peeling the garlic, measuring the soy sauce and the vinegar, dumping in the chicken parts, final touches, bay leaf and paprika. I sniffed the air above the pot and nod. Okay. I found my dish, Macario says. I point to my head and nod and ask, what are you working out? Ah, politics, nothing new. By now, Macario's dishing out the rice. Support groups are accusing us of being sellouts. I'm imbibing the sweet aroma of rice, but I say, what support group? I think there must be 300 support groups out there, friends of the I Hotel, workers committee to support the I Hotel, committee to struggle with the I Hotel, I Hotel Ping UN Tenants Committee, Chinese Affirmative Action I Hotel Committee, U.S. Postal Workers, I Hotel Support Committee, People's Church, I Hotel Support Committee, Low Cost Housing Tenants Association, I Hotel Business Tenants Support Committee, Garment Workers, I Hotel Support Committee, Poets for the I Hotel. <laughs> you know which ones, says Abra, the Maoist ones. You aren't Maoist? Well, yeah. I ask, how come sellouts? Abra takes my plate and gives me a good ladle of adobo for working with the system and uh, trying to get the city to use eminent domain to buy us out. <coughs> Who else got the money? They come to meetings and say that we've got to liberate the hotel from the system. Easy to say, I shrug and dig in. What's screwing us up is this buyback plan. We can never buy back the hotel from the city after it takes it away from Enchanted Seas. Not even for half of what they pay them off. It's never going to be realistic. I close my eyes, savor the flavors. Hey, I say, it's not bad. Thanks, Felix. Everybody gets quiet eating, nothing but the sound of eating, forks pushing around the food, rearranging the chicken and the sauce on the rice, scooping it up into satisfied mouths. Mm -hmm. Finally, I say, eminent domain, buy back realistically, it can never happen. Something gets proposed, goes to the court, court agrees, knocks it down, you get an appeal, goes back to city, win, lose, buying time, not buy back. Just buying time. 
you mean we're just using stalling tactics? You never know, we could win. What kind of line is stalling tactics? Uh, it's like this, Felix. A, a line is, Macario is looking for words. I got in. You think I don't know what you're doing? I don't know what your line is. How's your party line going to help me? You get a party. What do I get? <laughs> Abre and Macario poking around the bones on their plates. Felix is right, Abre says. Every group is using the hotel to test their line. I know the problem. How many tenants we got left? Used to be 50, now maybe 30. Every support group attached to one or two tenants hauling him around from rally to rally like the real thing. I don't say nothing because what's an old guy got beside this kind of family, this kind of attention? What does he know about party lines? But he is not stupid. Didn't survive all these years without learning something? Besides, Macario says, what about our own party? Abra, it's just you and me at the hotel. Central committee has pretty much said, you're on your own. Abra mutters, abandoned. Kids look tired. When do they sleep? Every day, running around trying to hold off the eviction. Meetings every <coughs> night, strategy sessions, going to court, protesting every place. City hall, the development, KMT headquarters harassing lawyers, signing petitions, hosting flyers, making speeches, speech at Glide Memorial, speech at Kellogg College Rally, speech at Garment Workers Union, meeting with supervisors, meeting with the mayor, meeting with human rights, meeting with HUD, arguing with every support group, setting up the phone tree, sending out spies to keep dads on the police, doing surveillance, make sure no one tries to burn the building down again, then maybe taking Frankie to emergency, got an asthma test, getting Wahat some heart medicine, getting Benny his social security papers, going over to the police station to pick up Lee, who gets drunk and sleeps in the street again. I think I know the situation. In the context of the larger struggle, they call it, they go battles to fight, save those nurses from jail, address the oppression of the Filipino professional class, oppose the Marcos dictatorship, rally the exile for democracy. What is the I Hotel? Just 30 old <coughs> men. Abra looks at my empty plate. One second, I hand her my plate. This reminds me of a dobo I eat in the war. Is that good or bad? The best, my beautiful Pinai saves my life with this same adobo, just the sauce and a little rice. I demonstrate, spoon at a time. Did you tell Abra that story, asked Magario, about how you survived Batan? I escaped to the mountains, joined La Luis Taruk and Mahuk Balaha. Abra looked shocked. You fought with Taruk and the Hooks? What's so surprising? You never told me you fought with the communists. What have you been hiding from me? What's so surprising? Gorilla force, just like Mao, fighting the Japanese. I shrug at Abra and Makayo. That's the lesson. What? United Front, Philippine Scouts, Philippine Guerrillas, Hooks. Chinese, Americans, U.S. Army forces far east could be nationalists, could be socialists, could be communists, could be imperialists. We drive out the fascists together. Macario's looking <coughs> like the adobo is doing the trick. He's clearing the table, washing the dishes. Later, I'm hearing him at a meeting. He's calling for a united front. The support groups ratify a united front agreement, agreed. I Hotel struggle represents the needs of a working class minority over private property. Agree, public officials must be held liable for human needs over capitalist needs. Agree, actions against eviction 
must be nonviolent to protect elderly tenants. Are they splitting a bottle of beer with me? Why didn't you tell me you fought with the hooks? Not much to tell. I get rescued by them, run away into the mountains. Hey, I look at Abra. Who got me to remember a Guerrero woman, just like you? What, what about the beautiful Kenai? I'm too late, that's all I can say. What is there to say? I'm holding her in my arms. Her blood doesn't stop, her heart stops. Wednesday night, August 3, 1977. Abre and I are looking out my window. How many down there you figure? Back in January for that protest, the newspaper said 5,000. Looks the same. Every second I see more people coming to the street, both sides. Who's not down there? I say, even gay rights. You bringing gay rights. Actually, said Abra, that was Wahat. He went to the exotic erotic ball in his Igorot loincloth. I guess he makes a big decision. <coughs> he also brought in the Indians. Looks like the whole city is coming to save the hotel. I hope so. The chanty never stops. It's coming out of loudspeakers everywhere. The whole place is wired for sound. The people, united, can never be defeated. The people. United can never be defeated. Stop the eviction. We won't move. Stop the eviction. We won't move. We won't move. We won't move. We won't move. I'm feeling the excitement. They're telephoning and radioing the whole city. People pouring into Manila town. Put their bodies up against the I Hotel. Still, we got to anticipate the whole night and maybe how many days I get prepared with supplies for three days. It's August, so I get a deal in Chinatown boxes of summer cantaloupe shipped out of the Imperial Valley. Abra and me sitting in my room, slicing the melon with the sweet orange meat. You sure they're coming? We got word they're organizing their posse. Riot gear and billy club units. Cavalry, too. Coming with horses? Yeah. Finally, we hear the sirens, sirens coming from every side of the city, getting louder every minute. The fire is going to be here. On the street, 13 rows of human bodies linked around the hotel. We won't move. We won't move. We won't move. We won't, we won't, we, we, what? From above, we can see the police on horseback swinging clubs like machetes. Dark horse bodies press into the people, press and lunge. We hear the crowd groan and resist. Every cry travels up to us. Abra shuts her eyes. Keep calm, keep calm. Then screaming, yelling. What are you doing? We're not armed. Help this woman, help her up. Stay calm, don't resist the police. We are nonviolent. Remember, we are nonviolent. Hold your places. Stand firm. We need a doctor here. Get this person some help. He's bleeding. Outside my door, I know the corridor is filled with a second contingent. Wet towels tucked under the door to stop the tear gas. My mattress is outside, blocking the landing. Folks packed in like sitting sardines, arms locked and waiting. <coughs> Police has got to drag them out one by one. Then finally there is us, the last 30 tenants, each one sitting in our rooms waiting. That's the plan. What am I thinking? That they never get this far, that this time, like the other times, they give up and go away. Drive their cars with lights and guns and clubs away. Drop their horses back to Golden Gate Park. Go home to their families and children Go home to TV and dinner. Let me stay here and live the few more years I got to live. How can so many people fail? Now I hear the sirens have stopped right in front of the I Hotel, right in front of my room. I say to Abra, 
They're going to shoot us with water. <coughs> Next moment, we see the fire ladder extend, lands at the second floor corridor window. That's their plan. Tough fist guys, Samoans included, resisting at the front door, look up. They are bypassed by a ladder. Firemen and police scale it like it's a siege, coming up to our floor in heavy boots, protective gear, goggles with clubs and axes, looking like monsters. We hear the commotion outside, smashing glass, hatchets going through the doors, breaking locks. All right, everyone out. Get up, get going, time's up. Bodies dragged away, bounced downstairs. Abra sitting on my bed, and for the first time, I see her crying. I'm sorry, Felix. I failed you. What are you talking? I touch her hand folded tight in her lap. You cannot fail. You can only live your life. You're going to see when you're my age. They're at my door, knocking even. I say, like I'm stupid. Who is it? Sheriff's Department, it's time to leave. Leave? Yes, that's right, open up right now. Abra wipes her eyes and pulls open the door. Her body is back to being fierce. She says, you keep your hands off this gentleman. We will leave quietly, but you keep your hands off. She pulls me up from the bed, holds on to my arm. We walk out together. I don't tell Abra the rest about not failing. It's going to be about remembering. I remember my union brothers saying here that if Young dies and Philippe Cruz, he quits the United Farm Workers. I figure it out later. When I see a picture of Cesar Chavez, honored guest of the Bolivian nation, on an elephant with Marcos, we get betrayed by saints and gods. Before that, maybe I could return to Abayani. Now, I cannot. We walk slowly down the old corridor, mattresses and waste, and broken pieces of the hotel everywhere. We go by Frankie's room, and I stop to look in. I see Frankie's two suitcases torn open, the letters <coughs> and postcards thrown up and scattered everywhere, love letters flying out the broken window. I'm getting confused. Something inside my gut is grabbing me. I hold on to Abra now. I think I see Fio's ghost back in the hotel again. He's walking out slowly, right there in front of me. Maybe he's got his banjo. I think we sent Fio away for good, but now I see even ghosts getting evicted. By the time we leave the hotel, maybe it's dawn. Foggy light competing with the neon. My God is killing me. Abra whispers, Felix, Felix. I don't tell Abra that maybe in the end, you can't remember nothing. And nobody else remembers nothing. But goddamn, we never give up. All we ever do is survive. I see through my bloody snot the last of my brothers walking away down dirty streets, trash skinning with love letters, looking up at old hotel and looking away for the last time. Frankie still in his pinstripe Macintosh, walking away with Pio, maybe hang out over at Portsmouth, then moving on, circumnavigating. And that's the end, like Pio's ashes, Ghosts, only I never think we can hurt like this.
uh, the, all the tenants were evicted from the hotel, and the men became homeless. They did. Uh, there was no real contingency plan, and they, they were housed for a while in the church, and then they they were spread to different um, um, single residency hotels in the city. Um, if you know the Tenderloin, that's probably where they went. And Tenderloin still in San Francisco is a very hard and difficult place to live. Um, and for 30 years, uh, then the hotel, of, uh, I don't know how many months or weeks later, was uh, destroyed. Uh, it was completely destroyed, the bricks were, and it became a hole in the ground. Uh, but the thing about it is the, 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 the land um, that the owners and the city were under so much contention about that space, it was a hole in the ground for 30 years. And I think this was, you know, it was a shame. Even when I was uh, researching the work for this, uh, for, the, um, for the book, it was just a chain link fence around a hole. It was shameful. It wasn't even a parking lot. So the city made no use of this huge chunk of land. And you can see that it's really big. Um, and then about five years ago, um, there were some entities that came together. Uh, people gave money, but also the, um, the Catholic Church became involved, decided they could use the space for school, and it, had, it was rebuilt. Uh, what was rebuilt at the, at the very corner was a heritage uh, cultural center on the first floor and um, a housing for elderly. <laughs> yeah, so finally, after 30 years, something happened. We came for the circle. Of course, all of the men who you know struggled for this um, outcome were have, have died. Interesting. Thank you. Yes. I was interested in how long you you spent researching uh, the work and how long it actually it, it took you to uh, to, to you know, start to finish. Uh, I started this project in the early 90s, and uh, it, it started out as a uh, maybe a short piece. And then when I when I started my work at UC Santa Cruz, <laughs> there's the story there. <laughs> you know, um, I, uh, I I began to research it, and so I, I would say about 10 years really of research. And the last few years, I I could have researched for another 10, but. <laughs> I finally decided that I had it, well, I had too much material, um, and I organized it finally. And for the last three years of those ten years, I was uh, consistently doing the writing. But I, um, I went to many archives um, at universities and special collections and special historical um, societies to to garner this material. Many of them were underground newspapers or posters and flyers that people collected from the period. Um, but what I also found out was that I could not, um, I could not confine the, the research just to the hotel and to the tenants and to that history. That in fact, um, I had to look at what the, the Chicano Mexican American community was doing at the time or what uh, the Panthers, how they influenced uh, this process. And also I went to the archives at both universities to see uh, what they had saved about uh, protests of students and the initiation of ethnic studies there. So it was a long process. I, I never knew that I was going to get into all that trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it was an education. So the photographs and the documents you, you displayed behind you as you read really provided this fascinating context. And I'm wondering if, uh, if there's any way that uh, uh, you've made some of that research available um, so that people, as we read, we can see some of that as well. Well, it's embedded in the. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I all of that is it was stolen from me, and I, I figured that if it's on the internet, then I could take it and, and show it to you uh, in this form. But um, I, you know, I, I think that there is a class at Stanford that uh, created some of the links. Um, and so maybe you could look over to my hotel and figure out uh, that. And I think that there are groups of students who are out there who are interested in this history who are also um, you know, creating a larger history. There's a book by uh, a historic, uh, history scholar, uh, her name is Estella 
You have uh, a screenplays, you have uh, journal entries, you have uh, some graphic novel um, elements. Uh, did you find one form uh, flowing more and more easily for you with the work, with the material, or, or did, you, did you just need all, all various forms to try and capture such a large uh, Well, what I wanted, you know, as I was uh, researching this period, I realized that it was for many communities, a, a kind of renaissance uh, in, in the arts. And it was a new discovery of uh, history and cultures that uh, uh, those communities had you know, finally wanted to be in touch with, but also artists came from those communities to, to uh, retell these stories. But I wanted to give you a sense of, sort of the, the wealth and the richness of that uh, time. That's why I decided that a way a book could do that was to, to actually represent it as dance or theater or music, um, and how would I do that? Um, and also, um, this is a period where um, the, the video image or the social uh, documentary comes into being. When people have video cameras, they're huge. And I remember my friends, I don't know how they did it, but they ran in and you know, um, made uh, films of live events. And uh, I, I think this was a revelation to people in communities who felt that their stories or their the media had not come to tell um, their side of, uh, of events. So I also wanted to make that available in the book to show that that's, that's what many of my contemporaries started to do at the time. Um, as for which flowed, I, 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 what I did was I chose 10 narrators. I had to limit it to, to that. And I thought about uh, narrative voices that would be able to tell the, these different aspects. And once I knew what the voice was, I, I, it could flow for me. So I had to make those choices. And then I knew when you create a narrative voice, you also create a character for that voice. Um, and once I knew who that person or thing was that was telling the story, that in some ways led me to make decisions about how that narrative would see any of that and carry it through. So what I read from was uh, I migrant and Felix is the narrator and the character who, but he's entirely a creative character out of many, many stories and characters. And he's kind of uh, a migrant every man. I, I wanted you to sense that he had done all this work and actually you don't really know. He's, Unreliable in the sense that he's probably lying about, you know, 90% of the things that he's saying he did. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, do you ever interview any of these people that the elderly? That, that was that was the other thing I did. I, I, um, uh, of course, the the, the elders uh, who were in the hotel had died by the time. Um, there were um, there were videos and or histories that they. That I, that I was able to look at and uh, read and also uh, view. Um, but those younger people who um, were 
Who were the protesters over that ten-year period, and what was their primary motivation? Oh well, there were many people involved, and um, it, that was hard for me to try to figure out who I wanted to figure it out. If you think about San Francisco from 1968 to 77, and all the kinds of groups that were there, uh, it must have started with people who had um, who were with the SDS, for example, uh, Students for Democratic Society. And then all the splinterings of different um, uh, Marxist and communist groups that had hoped that things would change. There were many uh, people with socialist uh, meetings. There were folks who were with the unions, um, so old union members. There were people who were communists from before and who had gone underground. Um, and then there were many people who were you know, just on the left, they, they, or they were activists in the they were concerned with health care, um, and, and so they were. They went into health, and they felt that TV was rampant, for instance, in, in um, Chinatown at the time, and it was a real problem. So there were many people who were nurses and practitioners who went into, into the communities, and they felt that that was going to be their life work. They started clinics there. So there's a whole range, and of course there are folks who were doing theater, and arts and poetry. Um, there were young people who decided that they would be photographers um, and journalists. Um, so that that was all part of it. And then San Francisco attracted so many people from early 60s on, and then people stayed on. It's always been, you know, that city. <laughs> and, um, but uh, many people come to live in San Francisco found out that it was was becoming less and less um, possible for them to live there because of uh, the rezoning of the city or the redevelopment that was changing, um, you know, the communities and houses that really wiped out places like Chinatown and Japan Town. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of these folks came back to say that was the end. And I think one of the things about the High Hotel that's interesting is that Many people were displaced by redevelopment in the city. Uh, finally said, this is the last stand, this is it. This is where we're going to take and, uh, and so the people you see who come out are, you know, people from all over. I don't know if you remember the People's Temple. The People's Temple was um, started by a very charismatic uh, minister named Jim Jones. And uh, that ended very sadly. Yeah, in yeah. Jonestown. But uh, the the Fife and the Lai Hotel, the, the People's Temple were involved and they brought thousands of people from, from uh, the People's Temple to, to so when you think about thirteen miles of bodies behind that big around that surrounding that hotel, it's an amazing number of people. community effort. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think that's why every time I go out there, I find people. There's just, and that was only, and the, 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 the protest that I described is only one protest over a period of 10 years. So if you can imagine, they mobilize these people again and again. And this was the last time they were not successful. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming out.